Hi, this is Harvey at Fagaholics again. Thanks for watching. This is going to be another graphing demonstration. We um, earlier did a modified Weinbart graph. This is a cleft graph. Similar to other graphs I do on figs, because of the heavy latex flow, I make some cuts. Uh, it's good if these are done an hour or two before the grafting is done. Just sap still flow. I just cut this top off and there's um, latex at the top. Um, I'm going to do a cleft graft and cleft graft I usually do when um, the sign is anywhere from um, say 33% to uh, maybe 75% of the diameter of the rootstock. Give or take. If I have a rootstock that is really flat on one side um, um, I can do a Reinbart graft on on that when it's larger, but um, like on other graphs here, I again look at where the bud is placed above here. So I want this bud to be growing. I don't need this much cyan. Um, I don't see a good bud right here. There might be a bud there, but there's a good bud here. There's a good bud down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just graft this. I don't need the top. So again, I want to, this bud to be growing. So I want this to be right above my graft union. And this is going to be the surface that's going to be making contact with the cambium layer. Only one side is going to be making contact. So I pick the side that I want. And, you know, a grafting knife, I always use um, a, this Tina grafting knife. I play around with different tools and gadgets, but I've used this for thousands of grafts and it works out well. I have three of them, um, so that I always have one that's sharp. So, it doesn't have to be precise, but I try to make equal cuts. If I have too much flexing, what I've been doing lately, I can use a cutting board. Um, it's safer than using your thumb to support it and maybe cut yourself. I not having a problem. So here, take a look at this. Um, you know, it's flat on each side. Again, you can use your grafting knife to check the edge. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I've got a good flat surface. It's nice if it's long. Um, a lot of times I have, um, you know, less than ideal conditions, close bud spacing. I can't get that long of a cut, but this is a, a pretty much ideal. Now, before I, place that. I don't want this to dry out and I don't want to be wiggling it around once it's in place so I'll wrap the cyan now. And this whole wedge is not going to get inserted in there. Some of it sticks up. It just splits the wood out too much if I try to get it all in there. Um, like in my other graph, this is Nesco film. It's similar to Parafilm. It's just a, a different brand that's no longer available, but it's the same sort of product. So let's lay this down, and it doesn't matter too much here. I see this is somewhat oval here. If I make um, a cut across there, it's going to be a pretty sharp curve there trying to match up. So let's Rocking back and forth allows you to cut one side at a time with less pressure. You just start to push straight down. You got to push with a lot more force. If it gives, I'm likely to get cut. I haven't been cut for many years, and I like to keep that. I have prone to other accidents though, but um, no graft cut. So again, this is where the bud is, and so this is going to be the side that faces. So it's important to align the cambium layer. That's you know, commonly talked about. It's just below the bark um, and not real obvious on this but let's just look, you know, right below this bark there is a line. And so that's the most important and sometimes the bark on the cyan is a different thickness than on the rootstock. So you're trying to line up not the outside bark but the cambium layer. Sometimes it, the rootstock 
cut will close in some, so I'll stick the knife in there to help wedge it open. Now the lighting isn't the best here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my magnifying glass because this is important alignment. My eyes aren't the best. I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing the cambium layer. Okay, I need to pull it out some, so let me just That looks good. You can't see that well enough because I'm having a hard time seeing it with a magnifying glass. But I've lined those areas up. I have a grafting rubber band here. You can use any sort of rubber band for the... There's different kinds of films that some people use. Um, green tape, um, some uh, PVC tape. Some of those need to be cut after a while or else they'll um, choke off the union, um, girdle it. Um, and if you get busy with other things, you might forget to do that. This rubber band degrades with sunlight over time and breaks down. It'll snap all on its own. A year later, you might find pieces of it still there, but it's not impacting growth at all. Stick the rubber band underneath there. Some people put parafilm on first and then the rubber band, but I like to have my sign held firmly in place. And the rest of my film here. And the rubber band could come loose if it slipped out underneath there. This film helps hold it. Um, this is the way I always do it. I, it works for me. There's a lot of people do it the other way. So again, um, this little bit of film stretches a lot. Um, I had maybe two inches there. I probably have applied six inches of wrap so far. Um, this film breathes, it traps moisture in, but it lets air in. So let's take a look again. If you look, I mean half of the, um, or it's more than half of the diameter, but um, it's all lined on just one side. This side will not get any growth. So again, the bud is over here. It's lined up above where this um, cambium layer lines up, and so this should be growing. Within a week, we should be seeing growth on this. Again, this is called a cleft graph. Thank you for watching.